What's happening, everybody? I want to tell you a story about family. Now, before I get into this, in 2012, after speaking in Israel, I actually headed over to Italy in an attempt to do some lectures. Now, unfortunately, the language barrier prevented me from lecturing. It was a disaster. And by the way, I apologize to all the Italian activists who tried so desperately to arrange talks all over the country for me. The only good thing that happened with this trip was that I conducted a 30-minute interview with Veggie Channel. Now, we're going to watch a short three-minute segment in a moment, and that's going to link to the full interview. I discuss family, how to deal with family, my family, and how horrible my family has been to me over the years. Now, as I say this, I do have to interject and put an asterisk next to this because I did have one family member that was really awesome, and it was my dad, who passed away in 2009. Now, I'm sure you've had a lot of problems trying to discuss veganism with your family, just like I have, and it usually led to a fight. Well, after a couple of years of trying to talk with my father, I realized he wasn't budging, so I decided to stop talking about veganism to him. I said, Dad, let's just talk about sports. We'll talk about other things, because this just leads to a fight. He wasn't let off, he felt my wrath, but, you know, after you're banging your head against the wall so long, and there's no progress, there's no reason to continue banging your head. So after, wow, four, maybe five years of not talking about veganism with him, I got a surprise phone call on New Year's Day 2002. It was my dad. And he said, guess what? I'm going vegan. I said, get the fuck out of here. What are you talking about? He said, no, man. I was at my doctor's office uh, yesterday, and I made a joke that my son really wants me to go vegan. Well, my dad's brilliant doctor, no, my sarcasm, finally said, you know what, Ron? Considering you weigh 411 pounds, you're a full-fledged diabetic who takes insulin shots three, four, five times every day, you have heart problems because of your diabetic situation. You take seven heart medications. I don't think your son has a bad idea. Now, you got to know my dad. He was a jokester. So his response to the doctor was, But Doc, I thought you were going to be on my side. The doctor said, You know what, Ron? I am on your side. Do what your son says. So my dad became vegan in 2002. And that first year of veganism, he was four. 111 pounds. He lost 187 pounds by sitting on his fat ass. He didn't even exercise. He was watching Maury Povich, Jerry Springer, Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy, things that he loved to do. He was retired, so he kind of, I guess, earned that right to sit around all day. But he lost all this weight by eating fruits and vegetables, plant products. I mean, I'd show up at his house sometimes, and he was eating a green pepper, a cucumber, and a tomato. And I'm like, damn, that's like level 27 vegan. I'm not even doing that shit. So my dad was basically a raw vegan for that first year. And in that first year, he also took out four heart medications and cut his insulin intake by three quarters. Now, as most of you know, when you become that heavy, 411 pounds, usually you have bad knees can't support the weight. Well, my father actually didn't even walk that well. He could barely walk, you know, from the house to the car. That was about it. So he didn't even exercise, and he lost all this weight. Now, I want to share something else about this story because my father did pass away in 2009 in October. And some people said, well, how come veganism didn't cure your father? Well, listen, 62 years of eating meat, cheese, milk, and eggs, smoking cigars, and never exercising, you know, seven years of veganism wasn't going to necessarily offset 62 years of living like crap. But it gave him seven extra years. The doctor was positive he was going to die soon, which is why he kind of pushed my dad into doing this. So it's not always going to cure an ailment, but it definitely helps an ailment. I've never heard of one situation where veganism could not benefit that situation. So, I love my pops.
Pop is always down for animals after that 2002 uh, life-changing experience. And just so you know, it started with his health. That was his main reason for doing it. But after a short while, he did start listening to me, and he became an ethical vegan. In fact, when I brought some friends over to his house to meet him here and there, my friends would say, Man, I know where you get your radicalness from, from your dad. I'm like, that's my shit! He's using my shit! Those are my lines! What do you mean? I made him radical! So much love to Pops, and I hope you enjoyed this three-minute clip, and I'll talk to you guys soon. If I can go into more detail about family, I know my wife doesn't like this, but I think family is the downfall of society. Because people end up living for their families, doing whatever their families want, never cutting that invisible umbilical cord that still exists. People would be a lot happier if they cut loose from their families once they hit the age of 18, trust me. No, I think my mom is completely psychotic. I think my sister and her family are completely psychotic. They've actually stopped talking to me because I care about animals. Where is the logic and the sanity in this? I can talk to groups of strangers and they break down and cry and tell me that I've changed their lives and my own mother, my own sister and her family won't even listen to me. In fact, I'll tell you about the last time we talked. It was August 19th. Last year, on my birthday, I was passing through Illinois, where they live. I was there for one day, because that's all I can take from my family anyways. It's not like we were close before that. But we went out to lunch to a place that just put vegan burgers on the menu. I assumed we were all getting vegan burgers, because I have a rule that I established in 1997, and it's if you want to sit down and eat with me, you eat vegan. Oh, we don't eat together. I'll see you later on. So we go there and we order and I hear macaroni and cheese being ordered. I hear a fish filet being ordered. I hear a vegan burger from my nephew Jacob and then I hear double cheese. So Erica knows how I am. I turn to her and I said, did I just hear what I thought I heard? And she, she didn't even want to acknowledge. She's like, yeah. So I explained to my family, I go, you guys know when the last time you saw me? It was one year and seven months ago before that. So we figured it out, it was about 585 days. I said, times that by three, three meals a day. So we agreed about 1,800. And then at the top of my voice, I said, you guys have had 1,800 meals to eat whatever you wanted to eat. Today, when I'm in town, you can't have one meal without dead animals and the things that come out of these murdered animals. And I stood up and I left. Walked out, called a taxi cab, took a taxi back to my mom's house, jumped in my car, and left. And again, they still think that I'm irrational for this, when they're the ones that are psychotic. 1,800 meals? You can't have one meal without dead animals? But this is the mentality of most meat eaters and of parents, too, because parents also hate to admit that they're wrong. Boy, a parent would hate to say, oh, I taught you something wrong, when I don't get this because you can't be right all the time. I don't know why parents, like most people, can't just acknowledge the fact that they made a mistake, make amends, apologize for the way they've been living, and evolve, change, move forward.